Here's how to solve for limiting reactants in chemistry. So limiting reactants is like baking a cake, where the recipe is just a simple chemical equation. Let's say it takes two eggs and one cup of flour to bake a cake. If we're given four eggs and three cups of flour as our starting amounts, it's pretty obvious to see here that we could only make two cakes. This is because even though we have enough flour to make three cakes, we're gonna run out of eggs first because we need to use all four eggs to bake only two cakes. In this case, we would call the eggs the limiting reactant and the flour the excess. If we wanted to see how much flour would be left over, we know we need two cups of flour to mix with the four eggs, so only one cup of flour would remain. For chemistry questions, we can use the same strategy. Here we'll use stoichiometry to see how much of a final product we could make with one of the given starting reactants and compare it to how much final product we could make with the other starting reactant. Whichever reactant gives us less final product is the reaction that occurs and is also the limiting reactant. So starting off, we first pick a final product to calculate. Quick tip, usually these questions have multiple parts where they're also going to ask how much of a certain product is made. So while you can use any of the final products to find the limiting reactant, check ahead to see which one they're going to ask for later and pick that product to save yourself some time. So in this example, we're going to try and find the amount of SO2 that can be made from each of our starting reactants. Let's try using the 30 grams of O2 first, which if we remember how to use stoichiometry, would give us 40 grams of SO2 being produced. Now, if we instead use the 35 grams of CS2 as our initial amount, this works out to give us 59 grams of SO2 produced. Since this first reaction gave us less final product, this is the reaction that actually happens. And thus O2 is the limiting reactant and CS2 is the excess. Now going on to the second part of the question, we've already calculated this since we were smart and picked the SO2 as our final product, which gave us 40 grams of SO2. Moving on to the third part where they asked for the amount left over, we're going to first see how much of the excess reactant, CS2, was used up. To do this, we're gonna use the actual reaction that occurs, but instead of solving for the amount of SO2 that was made, we're gonna solve for the amount of CS2 that was used. All we have to do is swap out the end part of the stoichiometry equation, do a little math to solve, and this gives us 24 grams of CS2. The last step is to take this 24 grams of CS2 that was used in the reaction and subtract it from the initial 35 grams of CS2 that we started with. This gives us 11 grams, which is the amount of excess CS2 that remains. And there you have it. That's how to solve limiting reactants in chemistry. Nice!